And we're live with another podcast. We're back again on the Mike and Mitch podcast. Mike here with Jeff again, as always. So uh, I guess we can just kind of get in. We've got a fair amount to talk about. More playoff scenarios tonight. More teams have clinched since we last spoke, last had a podcast. Um, the Flyers made a couple of signing or re-signings and everything. So, uh, yeah, we can just kind of jump right into it. Yeah, for um, sure. Uh, I guess first we can just kind of jump right into like the whole league itself yeah. kind of look at that. Uh yeah, so some of the biggest takeaways from the league well actually one of the biggest things uh I, I remember uh seeing on Twitter So far it's better than one shot podcasting at yours. <laughs> yeah, so far. So far so good. We're still on. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> um is that Tampa Bay they are now just three wins away from matching the NHL record for most uh, wins in a season with five games remaining. Detroit leads the all-time uh, record with 62 wins in the season. Uh, again, Tampa Bay is at 59. They are now just three wins away from matching that record and four wins from taking that record. Do you think they can do that, or do you think you'll start to see some players just relax and rest? They only have five games left. Exactly. I think the next two they might, but yeah. then after that, they're like, let's just focus on the playoffs. Right, you know, and I think that's what you really need to do. Um, it, it's, you know, because a, a lot of these powerhouse Interestingly, teams... Interestingly, because huh. right now, if the playoffs ended, the Lightning would be playing Montreal. They have one game left this season, April 2nd. Well, there you go. Each other. Right now, obviously, Lightning lead... 3-0. Yes, and all of them in convincing fashion. No, the December 29th game they only won by one. So really? Five. Was oh wait, the no, I'm thinking. Game. I'm thinking a different team. Yeah. Um, they were actually kind of close. I, I think not big like right things. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, last uh, game February 16th. Okay. Tampa Bay won three nothing. They shut them out in their first meeting November 3rd. Uh, Tampa yeah. Bay won four one. Okay. No, I'm so they haven't been ex- like blowouts. Yeah. I got relatively you. close. I still think it's probably going to be a sweep, possibly five games. I would say five games at most. Yeah. Because Tampa Bay, they're just a powerhouse right mm-hmm. now. Um, big and news. Uh, sorry, if go ahead. they do sit players or whatever, that April 2nd game is not going to matter. No, definitely not. Because, um, you know, like the mm-hmm. the matchups are going to be set no matter what, I think. Right. Uh, at least for, well. At the same time. Montreal. Yes and no, because. When was the last time Montreal was in the playoffs? When uh, was it last year? The year before? Were they in? If it wasn't last year. It was the year before. Yeah. Because that building gets pretty cra- uh, crazy when it's playoffs. It really is. The, the Bell Center is certainly, um, you know, a, a great one. Mm-hmm. I actually want to. I just remember even the f- one game, uh, the last game the Flyers played in Montreal when Carter Hart got pulled. Yeah. That building got loud. Oh, it did. Uh, yeah, the uh, last time the. And that wasn't even a playoff game. I know. The uh, uh, Habs went to the playoffs 2016-2017. Okay. Uh, they lost in the first round in six games to the New York Rangers. Okay. Um, but so a couple season like, haven't been in there. but Yes. Uh, I guess this is something I said before we got right. on. I guess we can kind of get to it in a little bit when we're looking more at the playoff picture. But I think they're going to be the last wild card. I don't think Columbus gets in. At the rate both teams are going, Montreal, they are picking up the pace. Mm-hmm. And Here's the only thing that Columbus has yeah. going for them. They have six games left. Yes. Only three against quality opponents. Yes. Montreal has five and five quality opponents. Yeah. Every game left is quality opponents. Yeah, so Montreal has the tougher schedule, but the, uh, for Columbus, the one thing that they have going for them is they have a game in hand. Mm-hmm. They're both games against the East. Yes. Uh, I think well, – because I think – I look at teams like Montreal, and first, first one and ha- foremost, they are – they have exceeded mm-hmm. my expectations this season. I had them in the barrel of the, the basement. Um, I really I did. I had them in the middle somewhere. Yeah. I didn't have them um, at the complete bottom, but – Well, yeah, not a complete, cl- complete bottom, but uh, – Because you know, everyone knew who was going to be at the bottom of that one. Yes. It's still surprising, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> – a couple years ago, they were a goal away. Yep. Anyway, uh, I think everyone knows who we're talking about. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Montreal, <laughs> the Flyers. Yeah, <laughs> the Flyers. Yeah, uh, the the uh, Habs. They're a team that I look at, and they interest me because they are slowly, but are now their last ten hasn't been the greatest. They're five, four, and one. Uh, sure. They did just beat Florida six to one. 
the other uh, uh, last night that is next game is against Columbus so that's a big game for them uh, uh, tomorrow at Columbus and teams that are getting hot at the right time are right around this time of the year is this final 10 games of the season or obviously less. Obviously, this is also because they have Carey Price. That too. Their season relies on how well Carey Price plays. Every and single if he's year healthy, it does. Because he does have It's remarkable problems. how well that Cause right now goal this, center is. His, and Niami too. But, um, yeah, he's been sharp for them too. Not particularly. <laughs> yeah, well, he's had his moments. Well, I'm, yeah, I was just looking at the numbers. But for oh, Price okay. this season in 62 games, 60, uh, uh, yeah, 62 games play, he's 33 and 22 with a 249 goals against, a 918 save percentage. Nice. Niemi, 17 games, 8 and 6, 378 goals against, 887 save I percentage. lied. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Plus, I didn't have the stats from front of No, you did not. Still. I didn't either. But yeah. obviously, but you at least knew, obviously yeah. if you look at that, yeah, that, price, that says easily, it all. Yeah, easily going to be the starter. <laughs> Wait, how, how, how many wins did you say he has? Who? Price. Thirty-three. Oh my gosh, he has as many wins as the Florida Panthers does entirely. He has three less wins than the Flyers do entirely. Dale Weiss has only played nine games, and believe it or not, oh, he has Dale no Weiss. points. Do you know? Um, Follins played fourteen games yeah. for them. Four goal. Four Wheel assists. has been playing uh, mm-hmm. well lately. Actually, uh, I saw. And in eleven games, he uh, has six points, All two right. goals, four assists. Not too bad, Wheeler. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That's kind of better than what he was doing in the Flyers. Yes, and he's getting more of a chance, I think. Here, obviously, um, Domi and Tatar have been a big leading the way. T- Tatar mm-hmm. has Even been exceptional. Druin, who I've not hadn't heard anything from since he was yeah. traded to Montreal. He's put up 52 points this season. Yeah, he, I 18 think goals and 34 assists. I think the fact that you have Katsukanimi, mm-hmm. uh, the rookie outstanding for Montreal, you have Max Domi, points. who's been great, and Tatar has been bringing the fire. Shea Weber's played Shea Weber. more this season because he's always kind of had some yeah. problems. He's played 53 games. But so my point that, is, is that when you look at Jonathan Druin, who was drafted, I think was third overall a few years ago by the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, maybe five years ago, I forget the year, but you know there's a lot of pressure on such a high quality first round pick like him. And when he got traded to Montreal, uh, some of those players like Domi yeah. hadn't been there if yet. If you look, because this year he's played 53 games, last year Weber, not to cut you off, yeah, but sorry, about you're that. good, you're but, good. Uh, he played only 26 games, yeah. Last well, year also, straight. injuries are yeah. a huge factor, but after that, he played three strike seasons, yeah. 78. Games. Yeah, that's good. That's His good. first he season, he played seventy eight games for uh, Montreal. Yeah, he needs it. Um, but for Domi or not Domi, uh, Drew in that is. I lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, I think th- that all these t- better players coming mm-hmm. into Montreal are help sure. easing the, and bra- uh, bringing the pressure down and off of Drew in, mm-hmm. and that's why. Y- what did the Tampa Bay get in that trade? Uh, they got um, the defenseman. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, the young defenseman. That it's uh oh gosh, I can't believe I'm forgetting this. Uh, straight up, it was uh, oh my gosh, Mikhail Sergachev. Sergachev, that's right. Jeez, because because it was like right in front of me right. too. Because I had it, I was, I was just looking up because I literally can't remember it. Yeah. And the name was right there. I'm like, what is happening? But it was just a, a one for one deal, if I'm not mistaken. Because mm-hmm. um, remember, they kind of made that trick because Drew was kind of important, but they weren't using him. Mm-hmm. They weren't really utilizing him. Not like that, but because he was always in like he played a couple of games. He was in their one playoff run. Yeah, he was there, but during the season he didn't do a everything. whole lot. I mean, there's that, but like he always o- he was always in the AHL. Yes, he was, and very few, uh, so. I think it's easy to say now that this trade worked out exceptionally mm-hmm. well for Tampa Bay because Sergeyev is oh my gosh, he's a tremendous young defenseman. Uh, you know, Montreal of course gets Drew in back in the trade, but that also cleared the path for Braden Point, who just hit his uh, second. He uh, is on pace for a career high in Drew yeah. in the season. A Drew in. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and, and then his his career high is fifty three points. His last year in Tampa Bay, he played seventy three games that year. Actually, 
He put up 21 goals and 32 assists. There you go. This year he has 18 goals for 34 <laughs> assists. He's only a point yeah. behind that. Um, and then for Braden and Point, g- again, that kind of cleared the way for him. Mm-hmm. Ever since his, so his rookie year was 2016-17, he put up 40 points that year. Not bad at all for a rookie. Nope. He's, he's gotten better. 200 at, points. Yeah, he's gotten uh, better ever since. Uh, 66 points last year. This year, he's 90 points, 40 goals, and 50 assists. Mm-hmm. This kid, I think he's a future Hart Trophy winner. You could argue, yeah. or or uh, definitely the Art Ross Trophy winner. But it's going to be the same thing that most of the, or what, um, what's his face got last year for Tampa Bay? Um, Sam Kucherov. Uh, Kucherov, yeah. That, oh, he plays for, the, he's playing with Stamkos, he's playing on the Lightning, so yeah. that brings it down a little bit, because look how good they are. Right, uh, that I do agree with, but still. That's the only thing that would keep him from my thinking. Yeah, that, and, and that's fair. You know, he's that's still only 23, so he's still Right, and that's insane, 90 points at 23, is remarkable. And he saw another one that people have said, well, what if you just kind of, you know, yeah, put an offer sheet out for him, because Tampa Bay has cap issues. Uh, they do, and if they were to try to uh, uh, put an offer out on top of that, they would have to make a move or they would change something. Well, they they would uh, uh, get his point. He's an RFA at the end of the year. That's the same thing people are saying with Marner too. Ooh, yeah, I know because um, they have to resign Brain Point. Uh, I doubt they'll resign Danik Martell. They'll resign Cedric Paquette and Adam Ernie. Uh, they still got Anton Strollman, Brain Coburn, Dan Girardi's, uh, Jan Rutz's contract, and Cameron Gaunt's. Um, a lot of contracts and a couple millions there. Mm-hmm. I think they pr- they might bring back Girardi. Because um, he's not going to bring much. No. He's 34. Yeah. Same thing with Coburn. And I think that Coburn, I feel like they like him a lot. So mm-hmm. I think they could reach out to a cheaper deal, like a two-year deal. Yeah. And, or Cheap enough deal where he's kind of your seventh defenseman. Yeah, you don't want to be paying too much. Exactly. Um, but that's also why it was so big for Tampa Bay to get Sergeyev in that trade mm-hmm. because you have a top six, if not hell, top four defenseman in Sergeyev, and then again, if since he moves Ruin up, came Braden Point, right. and he is a better version of him. Um, at least I think so. Yep. The the moves and 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 everything he uh, point. To see what they do with Callahan this season. Callahan if they keep him for that extra year next year because he's done twenty 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 twenty. Right. It do it they all buy him out or do they trade him? I think it's going to be rather difficult to trade him. Of course, because of that tra- uh, contract. Five point eight mil. He has a modified no trade clause. Uh, he uh, has to submit a sixteen team trade list, and for him honestly, I think a huge portion of that is. You might not see. I I think Anton Strowman might not come back because that's four point five mil right there, mm-hmm. and some of that money is going to help them re-sign Braden Point. Yeah, if they buy out Ryan Callahan, more of that money will go go towards Braden Point because I think Braden Point's due for a contract that looks something like what Kucherov's contract goes into effect next season too. Not yes. A year. Uh. Well. Mi- no. Um. Uh, maybe not that much. But I'm thinking more four or five mil range. I was just saying in general. I just oh yeah, yeah. That his contract goes into effect next season. Yes. The, so does those. Johnny Gord's. Yeah. So it's Tampa Bay is in a, quite a, a little bit of a loophole, but I feel like a lot of the good te- like the playoff teams right now, kind of are like when you were doing the trade deadline yeah. special, we noticed that with the Penguins and everything. Right. Like, not even that far off, but once Toronto... Even Boston isn't great. They're not terrible. They're not bad or great. um, Cap-wise? Cap-wise, it's 2.88 mil. Sure. But even, like, if you want to make a prediction out there, even the 3.9, almost 4 million that Mm. Toronto has, that's going to go mostly to Marner. Yes. Rightfully so. Oh, absolutely. But because of that, they're going to be having cap issues soon, too. Yeah. Because their problem was also because they obviously had to re-sign or sign uh, William Nylander. Literally went to the day. Yeah. And Austin <laughs> Matthews, his contract goes into full effect next season yep. with that 11.634 mil. Mm-hmm. Um, 
You know, they got Kasperi Kapanen. Neil He's going to get a hefty contract. contract. Neil Landers' contract goes down. Next yes. Year. Big time. Oh, man, by <laughs> nearly three, you know, around 3.2 mil. It's nuts. But they do get, depending on what they do with Garner, they do get $4 million back on that. Yes. And Hainsey. Hainsey should be gone. Garner, I don't know what they're going to do with him. They they definitely need to resign him because they, they have th- one more year left of Nathan Horton. Yep. It's amazing. Unless I just completely just... I it. think... Unless I just want to get rid of it right now and just say... I think um, at the end of the season, you can realistically see Nathan Horton being bought out. Yeah. Because he's not playing anymore. No. He hasn't played in what? Years. Years. It's crazy. And give him that giant contract. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Did he just shock you? I, I heard did, that. Yeah. I heard that through the my headsets. Ow, it hurt. <laughs> I don't know how. I shocked my lip. <laughs> Ow. Because I went, I leaned in like this, and like my part of my beard got stuck for a second, and it shocked me. Anyway, sorry, Nathan Horton. I, I didn't mean to uh, talk anything bad about yeah. you. <laughs> Apologize to the hockey gods. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so no, I I really think that you know, like, like again, like kind of bring it all together. Uh, these playoff teams, they right now they're going for the gold, of course, in in the Stanley Cup. I mean, some of them won't, the silver, some of them won't matter after a couple of years, right? Because you got your the top people you want. Yes, you're signed. The bottom six or whatever, you can just sign to small things like the Capitals did. Mm-hmm. The Capitals have had. They're another team that have cap issues. Yet every year they find, or last year especially because they only have nineteen thousand in cap space, but they always find a cheap contract just to fill the bottom half. Yes, like that's kind of what they did with uh, uh, Brooks Orpit. Yeah, because they trade him away, Colorado bought him out, and then they just signed him to a exactly. cheaper deal for only a year. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, so some uh, injuries now around the league. One of the bigger ones, really, Andrew Ladd. He will miss the remainder of the season. He has a torn ACL. Yeah. That's a big I, loss for a, the Islanders. It's a big loss. I, I think they might be done. I think they're still. I still think they make the playoffs, but yeah, I they're still making the playoffs, but that they're done. Yeah, because right now, if the playoffs start they today, they're playing to, Pittsburgh. They may fall off to a wild card spot, but even that's possible. Um, I doubt it, but that's... You never know, because like, right now, the current standings in the Metro, Washington leads 98 points. They have more of a comfort now. Three points ahead of Pittsburgh and the Islanders, but tied at 95. Uh, you have Carolina in the wild card, 91 points, and Montreal 90. And I, now the cutoff is completely with Columbus. Uh, as Philadelphia, if they lose tonight, they will be eliminated officially. <laughs> um as Columbus, sorry, uh, Montreal. They I mean, p- rightfully so. Yes. I mean, the only reason why they got this close is because they had to. Not they only that, but la- they were last for not last in the Metro, not last in the East. Yeah. They were last in the whole league yeah. multiple times this season. Yeah. They shot themselves in the foot early. Oh, easily. And that's why they're missing the playoffs. Exactly. And, and it, the whole reason yeah. why I think they went on the run is because of Carter Hart. They had a goal that didn't really. There was a couple games where the team scored like late goals or whatever yeah. one but he, they had a goalie that could make the saves for when the flyers weren't doing well yeah and do you want to hear how and, and for those who are thinking oh carter hart carter hart has not been that good he has been no no, no i'm saying like for <laughs> some reason saying that <laughs> i don't know i'm just saying i'm saying like oh, you know because oh, you mean the ones that keep saying that oh he doesn't have a shutout <laughs> no, basically but anyway so, but just to further prove how valuable hart is to this team so Alexander Appleyard uh, on Twitter, uh, he, he's you know like a he he's contributor to contributor to the Athletic, for the Flyers. Uh, he, he's you know some European guy. He, he throws out interesting stats left and right. He's some European on. guy. <laughs> well, well, no, like straight up though, it's it, it's you know it, it literally in his bio says can be found somewhere in Europe. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I think that's the quote of the show. <laughs> he's some European guy. <laughs> Uh, Alexander, if you end up reading that, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean well. Um, but 
he tweeted out yesterday just a nice reminder that you know the Flyers Carter Hart currently has the best save percentage in NHL history for a goalie over a season age 20 or below playing in 15 plus games. So there are five goalies on this list, including Steve Mason. He was a rookie. He won the Calder in 2008, 0.916 save percentage, 61 games played that year. Uh, the ball, I don't know much about him, 0.917 save percentage, 18 games played. Andre Vasilevsky during his rookie year, 0.918 save percentage, 16 games played. Carey Price, 0.920 save percentage, 41 games played. And, of course, Carter Hart in 27 games played, a 0.921 save percentage. So that speaks a lot about right. how valuable Carter Hart has been this year. And, obviously, his winning streak that he had yes. in February. Yeah, he when the tied had their winning streak. Yes, yeah. was he he tied uh, an all time record for most wins by a rookie twenty year old or a twenty year old I should say thank you not a rookie, um, yeah but it, it's just it's remarkable how well which easily he's begs played. the question to he's going to be starting next year so yes. the Flyers then ha- make it a little easier for their goaltending. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, and Scott Gordon actually had a long talk with Cam Talbot explaining why he only gotten one start, pretty much because he just got Hart, one start too, please. Not, not only has Hart as especially played well, but so has Brian Elliott lately, and yeah. uh, he did say that Talbot has been you know a total pro about the situation. Uh, Talbot has even gone on to say that as long as the team would want him back, mm-hmm. he's more than willing to come back to Philadelphia. Because he's, right. you know, there's that exciting opportunity for him to help mm-hmm. continue to mentor Carter Hart. We'll and I think that would be uh, yeah, interesting, yeah. We'll get to more of this when we talk about the Flyers. Exactly, yes. Just still keep on tours with the league. Yes. Because <laughs> that is a weird thing, because I just realized how close the Metro got. Yeah. Because I thought Washington was running away with it, but then all of a sudden... They were. There's a possibility of Pittsburgh taking the Metro. I know, which honestly... Which is weird, because like... I never would have thought what, that. a month or two ago? A month. They were out of the playoffs. Completely. Yeah. They are teetering back and forth between the That's, wild card spot yeah. and uh, the, the you know, being out, but the and fact that... I found the Penguins, I'm like... Are you, I is might want to stay here, because I am playing the Islanders. Yes. I mean, it doesn't matter anyways, because if you <coughs> go up ahead, then you're playing Montreal, or possibly yeah. Columbus, or... Carolina. Yeah, so, so for right now, uh, if the players were start today, it would be Pittsburgh and the Islanders. If the, the rest Caps... Of the, place, the rest of the <coughs> playoffs that still have to be decided are pretty close. Yes. Uh, if the Caps were to switch places with Pittsburgh, the, then Pittsburgh would be playing Carolina. Mm-hmm. That would be an interesting matchup as well, because right now it's Carolina and Washington, and uh, last night it was a 4-1 victory for Washington. Uh, it was a 2-1 game, then I think there was... Or no, I think it was three one game. Then the fourth goal was an empty netter. Uh, it, it was a pretty close game throughout the m- most of it, and Caps just kind of yeah. took over in the third, including Alexander Ovechkin's forty ninth goal on the season. Not only that, but that puts him at uh, tied for thirteenth all time with Brendan Shanahan at six hundred fifty six career goals, which is just nuts. It is. Um, yeah. So. Oh, another thing too. Uh, the Bruins resigned uh, Chara for another year. They did. They did. Uh, that that's uh, you know pretty cool to see that the big Z will be mm-hmm. back in Boston for and I think he's, another he's year or two. Like the game after he got signed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then other uh, d- you know staying within within the Atlantic, uh, John Cooper, the head coach for the Tampa Bay Lightning, he got a multi year contract. Uh, no surprise there. No surprise there whatsoever. Um, he's been phenomenal mm-hmm. for the Bolts and. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know enough said there. They had the best last ten games. <coughs> eight, yeah, eight two and zero. Oh. Wow. They kind of remind me of the Blackhawks a couple of years ago. Exactly. They're they th- didn't have that like long like point streak or uh, whatever that they had, but yeah, there's they have some resemblance to. They me. do. They they have, and I don't even think they even came this close because I don't know. I forget how many wins they had that year, but to possibly getting the most wins or whatever. Yeah. Because when was that? Uh, for the Blackhawks? Yeah. That was... 16-17 or was that 15-16? 15-16, if not 14-15. Are you talking uh, about their point streak? It wasn't 15-16 because they, they had 103 points that year and only 47 wins. They might have had the streak then, but cause I thought that was the year they... 
Yeah, they only had they had fifty ones in sixteen seventeen. How many? Fifty ones. No, uh, oh, sorry, I was one hundred nine points. Okay. Um. I'm looking for. Here we go. There is a time where. Um. Okay. Here, here's what it was: uh, an undefeated streak in regulation. Um, in thirty games from March twenty seventh, two thousand twelve. Twelve. Wow. Look. At, okay. This doesn't make sense. Um. But I maybe I don't know. Okay. It says March twenty seventh, two thousand twelve to March six, two thousand thirteen. They had twenty four wins and six losses, uh, in overtime. Um. That was an undefeated streak. I don't know if there's a typo there or what. But either way, twenty four wins is remarkable there. You because that was the big time win streak. That um. Well, not necessarily win streak, but it was you know it was that uh, undefeated streak in regulation, and and of course the all time record for undefeated streak um, in regulation yeah. that is is of course the Flyers mm-hmm. 1980 35 games right. Um, and I guess we can. Uh, there's also let's see here. Uh, some of the more major players' names that you know, have been out lately, uh, you have Sammy Va- Well, uh, yeah, Sammy Valton and uh, for the Devils, just an illness. There's been a big illness going around, like yeah, everywhere. Been, it's weird. They hit the Flyers hard. Yeah. Oh, big time. Uh, Giroux almost didn't play. Hartman was out for a few games. Um, you know, Valton in, of course, uh, Ross Mist- Risto Linden for the Sabres now. Um, Chris Letang, he has an upper body injury. Uh, his status for Friday's game against the Predators is in question. Andre Pilat, he also has an upper body um, <clears throat> injury questionable for the game against Capitals Saturday. You have let's see here for playoff teams. Uh, well, c- close to playoffs team, uh, Zach Parise, he's missed the past two games with a lower body injury and unsure if he'll participate in Friday's matchup right. against the Golden Knights. Um, Yanni Gord, he's been suspended. That's right. He was suspended for two games for an illegal check to the head. He is expected to return, however, Saturday against the Capitals. Uh, Pacioretty. <coughs> excuse Can me. we actually talk about that for a second? Yeah. Because I know it's your favorite subject. Oh, absolutely. NHL. How is it that Matt Martin got nothing? On mm. the cross check to um, Couturier, Couturier into the boards, nothing at all, not even a fine. Yeah. I don't. Think oh, and then fine. when Jake Voracek yeah. went to defend himself against he Johnny Boychuk, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he two gets two, two games. Suspension. Yeah, How yeah. Does that make sense? Um, it doesn't. Yeah, um, it's very infuriating just because. <sighs> uh, to One, be f- he was a Hart finalist last year, so you can't say he's a nobody player, and Sean Couturier, uh, Selkie, Selkie. Selkie Hart. I always get those mixed up for some reason. Close I mean, he is a you know Selkie. Hart candidate worthy player in my sure, opinion. But, but yeah, Selkie. That's uh, what it is. But it's Selkie. Yeah. Um, He's getting league wise recognition, yet for some reason, when Matt Martin, who has a record, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He, oh, he does. He does. I would think whenever you <coughs> see him or Tom Wilson, because <coughs> I felt that his hit on his uh, knee on knee with Vorchek was uh, due to his suspension too. But yep. Um, for some reason, they're getting away with things this season. Oh, they always do. It's uh, honestly, I give up uh, trying for mm-hmm. this league. I, I just are uh, for the Department of Player Safety. I just laugh every time I see something ridiculous as this. I just laugh. Now it's it's absolutely absurd mm-hmm. the fact that the NHL Department of Player Safety continues to make boneheaded decisions like this. Yeah. The fact that. I know these things happened a while ago, but I was we haven't yes. podcasted no, since. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's been, it's since, been a while, and yeah, um, it, it, it is very frustrating. And, mm-hmm. and you could tell when Katori went off the ice, he, he was, was pissed. He was beyond pissed. He, he, threw he threw his, his st- stick. He broke his stick. He broke he his stick. Drew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's just been frustrating as ever to watch. And lately, the refereeing um, has officiating. That's a bad refereeing. 
Uh, the officiating has been questionable as well. Right. Especially in that Islanders game. That that, was, that's what that I was, was going to bring up. Um, I mean, the only positive out of it was the Flyers didn't get hurt by it. Yeah. They cut off all the penalties. Which is amazing. But, um, yeah, the, yeah, the, the interference play by Hartman. Because it does bring you this question up, too, that the NFL also has and everything is, do you review plays? Like, calls like that or... Do you have like an official saying, oh, I think I might have missed something. Do you then go to Toronto or something and say, did I miss something? And then you just review it like you do for a goal or something. Right. I think oh, it's so tough. Um, I want to say you should, but that might just slow the game down a little bit more. A little bit, but the game's already as quick already. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um like, I know there's obviously, like, human error and everything with right. some of these things, and the game's quick, so some things you don't miss. But yeah. the official was right there. On I, I agree. There, there are some things that, you know. There are um, some things that were pretty yeah. blatant. Like, okay. But I was actually talking to uh, another buddy of mine, also named Mike, and uh, he said, because uh, we were having a conversation about this, he said, and he makes a great point. He said, I, I honestly think people are way too hard on on them, think about it. Hockey's the only sport that's played basically nonstop and it's only getting faster and faster. Imagine, and this is a, an excellent point right here, imagine a, a, a ref, a trying to be a ref that's trying to skate with Connor McDavid as an example. Everyone wants the NHL to keep getting faster and faster. And Did that... He, McDavid got a fine, right? Or was there a suspension he got? He has suspension. Okay, so you have no problem with suspension the best player in hockey right now. Yeah. But not Matt Martin doing Matt Martin. Who things. has a previous record. Or a human trash can in Washington called uh, Tom Wilson. They already suspended 20 games this season. 17. 17. Yeah. Um, but but that by definition is going to reduce referring accuracy. There's going to be a margin of error, and we're seeing it more and more now that the game's getting faster. Are there ways the refs can improve? You bet. Yeah. Are there rule changes that can help uh to ref the game even more fair, absolutely. However, you know, I just don't think the refs deserve the level of like the game. You know, so so my buddy right. Mike, he does bring up a good point. You know, and I, I said, you know, okay, like if you put it like that, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But but you already have the technology to see every little play and everything. If you can do a review of an I- offsides, which I'd still a little iffy on because sometimes it looks yeah, it's because that's so still one that's tough so to close. Tell. That is unbelievable. Even with the camera on the blue line, yeah, it's, it's still it's, tough. It's to tell. still very but still tough to tell. Um. So uh, yeah, it, even it, with that, you yeah. still. What is like you? Because it, it doesn't the technology with you that you. Because the technology, it, it's with their view on the uh, literally on the blue line camera. Mm-hmm. It's very t- t- yeah, t- it's tough because it, it's not the best quality and no. it doesn't give you the best angle. It doesn't get you a best view, of, especially if you're going down the middle. Exactly. Um, you know, and you know, he kept continuing saying, "Oh, I'm not you know fully excusing them at all. Just saying that they're very much a scapegoat and they have room to improve." I just don't think they have. They are as bad as everyone uh, likes to complain. You know, so he brings up some right. interesting points here and there. Like, uh, I think you know. I mean, very rarely you get those kind of games. But. Right, but I think the the prime example was of one of those games was the Islanders Flyers game mm-hmm. the other week, and and that was full on yeah. effect. That was inexcusable. And even the announcers, Jim Jackson Bill and Bill Kamen, I mean, were laughing at the fact that this officiating right. even happened, which. Other people would say, "Oh, they're Flyers broadcasters, so obviously they're right. going to feel that way." No, if you're just a hockey fan but or understand yeah. the rules of hockey, you would the understand. And then the goaltender interference by Ryan Hartman, Hartman, who was just pushed into the goalie. He, no, he wasn't even pushed in. His, and then he, he gave a penalty to Voracek Haig. for complaining on it. Oh, oh, that yeah, and Hay got a double minor for nothing, nothing because uh, the, the Islanders' season. own player high stick, high stick his own player, mm-hmm. and it got a double minor. Yeah. Um, with an official right there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's not. I I don't think it's gonna be that hard to see from five no. ten feet from me, whose stick while the player mm-hmm. who I question is high sticking someone, his stick's on the ice. I do think though near the end of that game they started giving the Flyers a little more calls. The Flyers yeah. were getting a little more. Calls yeah, in that game. um, that and the, all, the, I kind of the Flyers hate. lost. They lost themselves. It yeah. wasn't officiating. The exactly. Officiating wasn't the reason why the Flyers right, lost exactly. that game. Right, exactly. 
The Flyers just didn't play well. The but only time they played well was the four seconds they scored on the power play goal. That was yes. It. The one thing I, I do not like at all, though, is for the refs, if they know they make a bad call, yeah, they, don't they look for a yeah. makeup call. Mm-hmm. They look for it. And the team knows at some yeah. point they're going to get that makeup mm-hmm. call. It's going to be an absolute worst call. Or like when it's see. kind of a close game, so they might give a penalty here. Exactly. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but it's... No, a, it's ha- it's happened. Right. Um, it's happened before. We're like, oh, this team's losing, but you know, yeah. we want to make it no, interesting. Lo- so look at, um, honestly, a great example... The stadium series game, Pittsburgh, um, I forget who it was. They One of their players slashed the Flyers mm-hmm. players. It wasn't that bad of a slash. No. And the Flyers ended up scoring on the power mm-hmm. play in James Van Reeves, like, and that pro- started to propel the comeback right. in the stadium series game. And, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. I guess you have that in any league. Yeah, no, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, in the West, though, just I think we can do this like one last look at the West and then move yeah, on to the uh, Flyers. S- before but, you um, do that, really quickly, uh, it well, because speaking about the yeah. West, uh, Dustin Bufflin, he wore a full, uh, he wore a red full contact jersey in today's practice for the first time, so he that is huge for them. Exactly. So that that's big, uh, for Winnipeg, and yeah, that's big. But mm-hmm. go ahead. <laughs> but just looking at it, the last time we podcasted last week. Uh, the like the lamp podcast that Jeff does. The Arizona Coyotes were in the playoffs, and, and now, now they're, they're not. Yeah, and I am sad. <laughs> it's really weird how uh, it's because they have the Colorado has less losses, but Arizona has more wins. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they're both tied with eighty-one points. So, and I don't think they play each other anymore this season. No. Unless they don't think they do, but there's a possibility they do. If it is, that'd be great. Because if it, ki- if it was one of those things where they played each other like the last game of the season and it was like a winner get in kind of thing, mm-hmm. I'd be like that. Kind of like the Flyers had to do last year. <laughs> and they also had to do an extra game against Florida. Yeah. But obviously, um, Nashville m- or teams that have made the playoffs since we last podcast, it was obviously San Jose has since made the playoffs. And Nashville. Wayne Simmons, Nashville Predators have made the playoffs. And they're just one closer, one thing closer, or a playoff series winning closer to the Flyers getting a better, uh, their better draft pick. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Words. Words coming from my mouth. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Other than that, I think most of the playoffs. I think that in the West, it's pretty set. I think it's dependent on the last wild card. That's yeah. the only thing I think that's um, going to change. Um, I think the Central... The Central, I think, set. Is it's definitely set because the closest team is... Eh, maybe not. It's six-point difference, but it's still... I think I it's... Think it's St. Yeah. Because St. Louis has a chance to... Win. And then Pacific, that's pretty set. Yeah. Because St. Louis tonight has a possibility of making the playoffs. Or clinching. Clinching, yeah, uh, which I find even s- more surprising because they were just as bad as Flyers. Yeah. Were. Uh, do you, Do you have those uh, clinching scenarios on you? Uh, I had them up or saw them up on Twitter earlier. Okay. So I was trying to find them earlier, I couldn't find them. But yeah, I think really the West is pretty much set except for the wild card right now. It's um, Dallas. They are 84 points. They're the top wild card team. Arizona and Colorado tied uh, here it is. 81. And but Public Relations tweeted it out. There you go. Colorado um, has 81 points. And has the Veg- there's right two there. playoff right there. central, uh, clinching scenarios. Okay. Uh, both one for Vegas Golden Knights and the other for St. Louis. Oh, for nice. St. Uh, the Golden Knights. Uh, they will clinch the playoffs berth if they w- earn up at least one point against the Colorado Avalanche. Okay. St. Louis, the St. Louis Blues, will clinch a playoff berth if Colorado loses to Vegas in their regulation. Okay, so Vegas just needs a point, and Colorado needs to lose in regulation for St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, so we know the cutoff with the East. It's just Montreal now in, in the wild card spot. Yeah. Where do you make the cutoff for the wild cards part in the West? I think it would really be I with think it's Minnesota. Just Arizona. Really? Uh, Arizona? Okay. Not even uh, 
Oh man, Minnesota has really fallen off. They're three Minnesota's six and one in their last yeah. ten. They have five games left, five against quality opponents, four against the West. Ooh, that's gonna be tough, actually. Yeah, I'm still sticking with the the cutoff. Is Minnesota? They could be just because it's only two points. Right. And obviously, that's, when that's right exactly there, why, that's why I'm saying that because it's only a two point margin. Yeah, and uh, Arizona and Minnesota had the same amount of games played. Mm-hmm. That's why you can't really throw. Columbus out either because they're only again two points out, but still, I I think Columbus is unfortunately going to fall out of the playoff race completely. Like meaning you know yeah, just not make the playoffs. Air, here's they what had I this would both Montreal and Columbus had the same exact last ten games five four and one. Wow, that's that good. All right, let's do this, Jeffrey. Yes, go to Columbus's remaining schedule. I will go to Montreal. All right. And then we can do the same for the West, too. I just want to see the p- opponents are playing next, and if that's... Ah, interesting. Ah. Tomorrow, Columbus plays Montreal. Yes, I was mentioning that earlier. And then Saturday, they play Winnipeg. Tuesday against Tampa Bay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, man. And the month of April... Um, April 2nd, they play Tampa Bay. April 4th, they play Washington. And Ap- and the last game of their season at home against uh, Toronto. Columbus's schedule is a l- tiny bit easier. I'm saying a tiny, tiny bit easier. Bit. So but they face Montreal tomorrow. They got Nashville Saturday. Buffalo Sunday on the 31st. Boston mm. Tuesday. But then they have the Rangers in Ottawa. Here's the... On April 5th and 6th to close out the season. Those two might be able to. Right. Here's that's the only saying, other yeah. thing I can think of. As if the playoff... If Tampa Bay could be sending people in that game. And the game that they mm-hmm. play against Montreal. Because there's only like a week left. And just rest. You mean Columbus? Or Montreal? I'm talking about Montreal. Ah, so okay. Because they play... They play yeah. Tri- and and you can honestly this argue... Is only, this is my argument to possibly... They yeah. could have a thing. Um, is... Uh, maybe not. Because if... Washington starts pulling ahead, and they take the Metro. They might sit people yeah. in that game again on the 4th. And then that's the same, I would say, against Toronto, too. Because it's the last game of the season. And yeah. They would want to sit people, depending on Exactly. Because it's like, at that point, they want to be no matter what, they're facing Boston. Yeah, no matter Toronto what. Toronto wouldn't care about this game at all. Exactly. Unless, for some reason, Toronto completely falls out, and there's a chance for... Um, them going wild card and Montreal going, yeah, to third spot. Which, if I'm Montreal, I don't want that because I don't want to get up, go up against Boston, and I don't see it happening. <laughs> but I guess let's real quickly, let's look in the West. I mean, there's just three white, but we can look at Colorado, Arizona, and Minnesota. Yep, yep. Colorado, I'll do. Um, they have to play Vegas tonight. Ooh, Colorado plays on Friday. They play Arizona, and then Monday mm-hmm. on the first they play. A ba- they have a back to back. The first against St. Louis, and then Edmonton the next night. Then on Thursday, they play the fourth. They play Winnipeg, and then their last game of the season is at San Jose. Not horrible. Not the best either. That I think the game that would really decide is maybe that game against Arizona. Yeah. Um, do you have any up? Or hmm? Did you have any up for... Uh, let's look at Minnesota. Um, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, they have two, they have a three day off, day off break, but then on Friday they play Vegas, then the 31st they play Arizona, and then the second they play Vegas, Thursday against Boston, Saturday against Dallas. And okay. then real quickly, we'll look at Arizona. And then we can jump to the Flyers. 
because I do want to get your opinion on uh, yeah as well. Um, obviously tonight they play Colorado. Then Sunday they play Minnesota. That I t- just mentioned. The next Tuesday or on Tuesday the second they play L.A. Then Thursday Vegas. Saturday when uh, Winnipeg. So it could easily for all three kind of go to the last game of the season. Yeah, you, you could see that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to be tough. Let's uh, transition a bit because this is also like league-wise, I guess, and Flyers-wise, they made a signing. Yeah. Re- or extension. Well, to, to extension and a signing, to be fair. Yeah, true. Because uh, Joel Farabee. Because don't they both happen on the same day, I think, because Farabee happened earlier in the day, right? Or was that the day before? I think it was the day before. Right. Yeah, the day before, I yeah, think. Yeah, because... Uh, Joel Farabee, he did sign yeah. his uh, entry-level contract. He let Boston know that he wasn't going to return. Uh, and he, so here's the interesting thing. So, with um, with college players, and, and, and it, it, it's it's very confusing. So, with, um, so when you're uh, drafted into the, uh, into the league by, right. you know, by an NHL team... You either go to your uh, back to your junior team, or if you're good enough, you stay in the NHL. Right. Once you turn 20, you then are done with juniors, and you either uh, go to the AHL or you go to the NHL. However, for um, college players, it's a little bit different. The moment they say they are done with college, they either can play in the AHL or the NHL, right. which is interesting. Because he's forfeiting college, he can go, again, in the NHL or AHL. So that the really rest is up to him right? Uh, for training camp and uh, you know, for next year. And, of course, uh, and I don't. I think it's very rarely, but I think he's gonna. That's gonna be on the fan Most tonight. likely, yeah. he has bulked up a lot. Right, though. he uh, played well this season too. I'm pretty sure he he did. He did have uh, an, an injury towards the end of the season. Right, uh, which all off season he can kind of mm-hmm. heal up. Yeah, and because he's got what rookie camp doesn't turn until late May, early June, somewhere mm-hmm. around there. Right. No, it's June. It's, um, like after, it's like after the draft and all that. That's when it is. For what? The rookie camp. Oh, rookie camp. Uh, June ish. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, and then uh, he'll join the Phantoms after his recovery from his recent injury that he sustained. But you know, for the most part, uh, you know, he's gonna be. Here in Philly or or Allentown and uh, or Lehigh Valley, I should say, but it, it's you know it's definitely exciting. Um, I think the fact that uh, Farabee is leaving Boston University mm-hmm. is, is big. And, and here's here's an interesting question I want to bring up to you: If Ron Hextall was still the general manager, do you think Farabee would still be signing that entry level contract today? Sure, because it's like uh, Sandstrom last year. In a uh, way, yeah, not really the same, That's but true. Um, I think he, if he, if it was like he had, he couldn't go to the fan to the Phantoms, then he might have hesitated a little more and said, "Right, you should stay." But I think because he could just easily go to the Phantoms, Hextall probably would just brought him, would okay. have brought him up, yeah. and just put him on the Phantoms. Yeah, no, because I, I just wanted to ask you that, just because I, I've, I've seen like someone ask that before on Twitter, and just it kind of got my mind racing right. a bit. What do you think on that? I don't know. Like, I, I like the points that you bring not, up. Because it's not really him being on the Flyers yet. Yeah, and exactly. And not guaranteed he's on the Flyers yet. But at the same time, yeah. Vrobi, Vrobi have also made it the Flyers coming out. And we still had text all then. That's true. Um, I honestly, I, I'm not sure. I'm kind of 50-50 split. Mm-hmm. But the more I'm thinking about it, it's more 60% hey would still sign 40% yeah. no. The only reason is. I think also he just would want him signed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, the only reason I would think no is because Hextall, as we knew, is very patient, patient yeah. and he would want him to develop as much as possible. And I think definitely another year mm-hmm. in Boston University, probably not two, but you never know, and then go to the Phantoms or something. Right. But 
you know, don't have to worry about right. that, of course. But, um, yeah, no, but I, I think regardless, you know, it's great for sure. um, Joel Farabee and Flyers' future. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Roffel, as you mentioned. Yep, he resigned to or uh, signed an extension for the Flyers yep. this year, which caught me off guard. A little yeah, because uh, I wasn't sure if they were going to resign him. But right, and that's why I said interesting to you the other day yeah. about it. Uh, two years, three point two mil, one point six average. Yep. I, um, I, I, but also I, I like I think, it because Mitch also made a good point too. Huh. He thought he would have uh, Fletcher would have tried to bring in his own guys, but right. Ruffle's a pretty solid fourth line. I think because he's very versatile. Because our fourth line right now is AHL. Yeah, that's not a fourth line. That's an AHL it's line. In, yeah, but then Raffle is a guy I think that needs people around him. Like if he's with Lawton, that's a pretty good. I think the way you should put it next year is fourth line. Thing about this: Michael Raffle, Scott Lawton, Ryan Hartman. I do knack. I'm or still, even, I'm or even up in knack. The, I'm kind of up in the air and resigning Hartman, honestly, mm. just because I haven't seen much from him. To yeah, say no, I hear you. Otherwise, because his first game he played really well, and since then he's had down. some glimmer of he looks yeah. good, but a lot of times I'm, I yeah I don't really see him much. I mean, he did. I think he did do well in Washington against Washington. Yes, he well. did. Uh, my thing with Ryan Hartman is I I still am very supportive of him and his game. I, I think wouldn't mind either way if you resign him or not. Yeah, because he could be a good fourth liner. That that's what. But I, also, you could put. Abe Kubel there too. I think I would love to see Nicholas Abe Kubel there on the fourth line wing. Um, but and then put Hartman either on the third, if right. not fourth. Mm-hmm. But I think that you know, because for, for Hartman, he's not as in my opinion, the type of player I see in Ryan Hartman. He's got that chippy edginess like Travis mm-hmm. Konechny does. He's got some speed, good penalty killing like Lawton does. Um, Do you use him on the penalty kill? I I, th- I don't think, I don't think so. I I know he, he at least I think he's been used in in the past in, in Nashville and Chicago on the penalty kill. I could be mistaken, but um he's not going to be, you know, putting up like 20 goals right. every year. He his more of his defensive play right. is and is, you know, uh physical physicality mm-hmm. is is what's going to make right. his game you know, uh, better around him as a player. And He's an RFA this year too, this se- right. season. But um, so yeah, there's that option. Yeah, because I think this off season, what I think, what I would do is, um, like say we signed, if we just signed, uh, two people, just Eric Carlson, because I want Eric Carlson. Yes, I, like I know him. you do. We don't really need him, but I would like him. Um, and I mean, honestly, say they signed Duchesne, who would be a second liner, sec- yeah. second, uh, second center. line center. And then he put Drew and Couture back together on the first line. Patty on the third? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you have Lawton fourth line center. Yeah. That's pretty good, I would think. That's pretty sharp, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I like Cause how Scott Lawn's game has. There's I, I think it's just getting better every it's year. It's getting better every year, but I think if you put. Patrick's third line, like if you're comparing the Flyers against the Penguins, because yeah. that's what everyone always compares them to. If you put, because or Patrick plays against third line anyways against the Penguins, yeah. and the Flyers' third line with Patrick is a better third line against the Penguins, yeah. uh, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. And I think fourth line wise, I think you go back to c- similarly to what you had with Lear, Lawton, and Raffle. You don't have Lear right. more, but a Lear esque player, whether it's yes. Hartman or Avi Kubel, yes, or someone else, maybe. Yeah, if Ratcliffe, Isaac, Isaac yeah, Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe yeah. Uh, he, he's been catching people. my eye lately. Yeah. I wasn't sure how I felt about him first, yeah. but he's been really turning mm-hmm. some heads. And he's Isaac a big, Ratcliffe, he's a big body, and I he's a huge body, and he put up fifty goals in OHL, and that's not an easy feat to c- no, accomplish. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but then there's also uh, what the Flyers do with Har- uh, Frost. Yeah, I. But then the only other problem is if you did, because si- the only reason why I'd say they probably sign, um, Carlson and mm-hmm. Duchesne, just just someone I threw out there because they could easily go out Panarin too, but just because they want to 
spend yeah. money or whatever they're trying to this off season. But um, he might kind of because the defense would look completely different when you have Carlson here. Because mm-hmm. then you kind of have a similar situation now. Because I'm assuming McDonald would get bought out, so you wouldn't have to worry about him. Because then you would have Carlson, Provorov, Ghost if he's not traded, uh, Gudis, Haig. Sanheim, and then you still have Marn and Myers. Yeah. So then it's like, what do you do then? It's <sighs> yeah, it's tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's why these last couple games for Marn are probably big for him, even though mm. he's not a free agent until 2021, 2022. But in case they use him for a trade or whatever. Right. Um. And I hope they don't stick with the seventh defenseman. Uh, uh, there's no way they will. So all I still think they try to go after a goalie, whether it's Elliot uh, Talbot coming back as a backup to Hart or whoever. My only thing would be, because Mitch and I were talking about this the other day, mm-hmm. um, I don't know how if Brian Elliott would want to be a backup. I think or if he would be I a team. I think he will. Or would he prefer... Cause yeah. Right now, I think Brian Elliott's either going to be a starter. Would either be a st- not a starter. I don't or think sorry. he's a starter. I think he would be a tandem. Okay. A goalie tandem somewhere or backup. Backup, right. That's what I think his, at 33, what Elliott is. And and I'll be good with that. I don't that. know if and Elliott would want to be a backup. Or I think it depends on the team. I think mm-hmm. if it's a team like And I still now, haven't seen enough from Philly. Talbot to say one way or the other if the Flyers yeah. are interested or not. Right. I think if, if you're a team like Philly... Elliot would want to stay here if he can. I think yeah. he even mentioned that to mm-hmm. someone, but because he, everyone knows that Carter Hart is the starting goalie of the yeah. Philadelphia Flyers yeah, yeah, here yeah. on out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I, you know, there could be a possibility that the Flyers might go out and get a better veteran backup. Sure. Spencer's Maybe out for there or yeah. in the free agency. That would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobrowski, he's out of the question for sure because it's, yeah, you know, y- you know he can start 50, 60 games, mm-hmm. and you want Hart to have those numbers. Right. Um, I think for Brian Elliott, as much as he would want to stay, I think his time here in Philly's done. I think that it's going to be – Hart and Talbot, or Hart and Talbot might be done, and someone free agency, mm-hmm. possibly like Verlamov. Um, or I'm trying to think, I'm looking at the free agents list right now, right? So I'm just thinking in my mind if what you're the good, li- yeah. I'm just thinking of the lines of what the lines would look like if you had uh, Deshane in there, yeah. Um, I guess the top line I would do, yes. Yeah. He Giroux, puts up points. Giroux, it's just Couturier, and Konechny. Because remember, Deshaun can also play left wing. That's keep, also true. Keep that in mind. Um, That'd be a pretty nice first line, though. Right. Because that's what the first line was before. Um, well, I meant with Deshaun. Yeah. yeah. And then second line, you could do Deshaun. TK. Vorchek. Even though I said 2K on the first. Oh time. right, <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying. And like then you, you could put you could like fl- you could even put JVR there. You could put. Yeah, Lindblom there because he's blossomed this year. L- Lindblom has been put phenomenal. Lindblom with Patrick back again on the third line. Yeah, and put him with Hartman if you still have him. And then the fourth line of Raffle, Lawton, and and extra. So on Albe Kubel. Yeah, no, I'd sure. be content with I, that. I would be good with that. Yeah, or even Ratcliffe maybe. Sure, that depends on how well. Or he does if camp. he's available and ready, Verobiev. True. Because you could put uh, Misha center, mm-hmm. lots wing. But I prefer a lot in uh, centering. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So for me, though, it's as much as people love Matt Sheen, I like him. I don't mm-hmm. love him, though. Right. I don't know why. It's just for some reason lately, he's been one of those players that he's been in the back of my mind saying, right. is he one of those not – I think because when I think of like a cancerous player, I think of like a Vander Kane esque. Nothing against sure. him. It's just I've never really liked his mentality. Uh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in Winnipeg yeah, and Buffalo, he had those yeah, problems. Because uh, his skill, I'll admit Duchesne that. Duchesne near the end of his time in Colorado. I yeah. Think that 
And not only that, and then when he went to um, Ottawa, oh, yeah. things have been a little shaky. And, right. you know, now that he's in Columbus, like, mm-hmm. you know, sure, he's putting up all these points, and that's great, but it's... Duchesne needs people a line right. to look right. good. Right, uh, right. But I, I'm the type of person that if I was a GM, mm-hmm. I would say I want my team right. to have tremendous team chemistry. Mm-hmm. Well, team I mean, chemistry is a big thing right. for me, and I want these players to mesh well, almost like a brotherhood, mm-hmm. inside, on, on and off the ice, no matter where you go. And for a player like uh, Matt Deschene, I don't know if I entirely see that huge chemistry with them. Right. That That's just how I think. Mm-hmm. I, I could that. be completely wrong, but that's the vibe I get from a player like I just him, mentioned unfortunately. Dush- I just mentioned Duchesne just because I think he's going to be the best center out there. Yes, I that Flyers, I do I agree with. I Flyers are just going to want to try to get a third-line center. So, um, I'll put it this way. Uh, do you uh, want to look at like the best available centers out there? Sure. Okay, uh, let me bring this up. Obviously, when we do our free agent special. We oh, that's that going to be fun. I, I, love, I love free agency. Dude, it, it, it's the greatest thing. Um, all right, so you have Spezza, you have Matt Desheen, you have Dave Boland, uh, William Carlson, but he's an RFA, Kevin Hayes, that'd be an interesting one, Derek Broussard, uh, Joey Thornton, Jumbo Joe, Latera is gone, of course. Speaking of Latera, yeah. Um, he's completely he's getting a four month probation and no jail time from his whole. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I put this delicately? Um, his cocaine ring? Yeah, the shark. You know, let's just <laughs> go ahead right and say it like that. Uh, yeah. We laugh because there was a story that came out like oh, last boy. week or whatever Gosh. that. Um, Philadelphia like caught like this huge vessel going to y- Europe of cocaine. I'm like, Yuri, <laughs> <laughs> are you sending it back to Finland? <laughs> Come on, Yuri, what are you? D- <laughs> it's the only thing I thought of. Oh, that that's story. terrible! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, I know we're gonna miss the playoffs. Yuri. Oh, like, if, Thank and you. just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> trying, um, to make, trying to get the spirits up in the cup. <laughs> But it's on the clubhouse. It's not baseball season just Yeah, right. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow 305. By the way, this is the most exciting uh, excitement I've had in years for opening day. Yeah, I bet. Thank mm-hmm. you, Scott Kingery. <laughs> Scott Kingery. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going back to centers, Marcus Johansson, he'll be a UFA. He's also injured right now for mm-hmm. Boston still. I, I think, or no, if not, he's close to coming right. back from a concussion. Brock Nelson. I've always liked Brock Nelson. He's a 4.25 cap hit. It's a little expensive. He's 26. He has 50 points this year. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. I um, believe what the heads are saying. They want the players to spend money. Yes. Uh, 24 so. goals, 26 assists. Uh, you have Anders Lee, but there's no way he's leaving. The Anders, especially considering the fact he's their captain now. Mm-hmm. Marcus Kruger. Um... Trying to pick uh Philpula, who's out there. No, if br- they try just just randomly just gonna say this, but if they try frost at wing. He's a couple r- times. He is uh flexible. Yeah. He would be fine at wing, I think. Mm-hmm. I think that's I a great way to start him. I mean But I would prefer him at his full time pos- uh full time uh yeah, his position. If you still have Scott Gordon as your coach, he's like Haxtell and doesn't seem to mind putting center or something. Right. Things. Which, but how do you I, feel I think about that? that? Just might be a new NHL thing, just because people yeah. get tossed out all the time. Yeah. That they're just gonna be like, okay. exactly. It's like yeah, just get center. used to it. Yeah. yeah, um, that I wouldn't mind. Okay, that's I because the only thing that's gonna be against Frost is his size. Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because just look how many players there are in the NHL that are mm-hmm. dominating at this level. Mitch Marner, Braden Point, Johnny Gaudreau, three of the top names, all have at least 70, 80-plus points right now in this season. Their sp- size does not matter. Their speed, they, they carry themselves on the ice like it's nothing. They stick with these guys. And, you know, sure, I, th- I think for sure that uh, Morgan Frost has to bulk up. And, and I think he actually has 
since his draft class. But really, I have a name for you. Oh boy, yes, Claude Giroux. Yeah, look at he's di- small, and look at the points he's put up since what 2011 was it? He's what second or top? Yeah, at points like right behind or right exactly. around Crosby. Well, look what Marty St. Louis did in his career. Look what Danny Breer did in his career. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, Breer was a winger. Or was he a center? He was a center. All oh, right. He was a center. Um, but. I mean, they're bigger than Frost, but still, right, they're smaller but still, players. They're small players, yeah. yes. But they carry themselves. Obviously, you and want your it's f- encouraging yeah, to see obviously that. Obviously, you want your centers to be bigger. Even Patrick isn't the biggest, but He's still. not, but he he's gotten stronger mm-hmm. upper body wise because remember his second or uh, whatever game it was in his rookie season mm-hmm. against Anaheim, he got concussed because right. he could he wasn't strong enough then to really you know, obviously he's a strong look player, at, but look he, at what he's come back from this year. He's come back from like three different injuries in three yeah. games. And he's <laughs> put up more points or if not as many points as um uh, last year. As last year already. Uh yeah, he has 30 points, 13 goals, 17 assists, same exact as last year in 68 games played. He needs a goal and assist for both in career highs and uh, or in career highs and goals, points, and assists all together. Mm-hmm. Also, Drew put up 80 points this season. Yeah. Just another person that put up 80 points. You small. <laughs> but the only thing that people say is what you said for small people who aren't that big as yeah. board play. Yeah, board play, I think, is huge. Yeah, that's why the people want you to be a little bigger, wise, bigger because of that. Yeah. Um. Here's two interesting names out there that I would actually like to see the Flyers go after. <clears throat> Wayne Simmons and Eric uh, Carlson. Yes. I agree. Um. Brian Boyle. Okay. Only a 2.55 cap hit. UFA, he's 24 points this year. Not too shabby. Mm-hmm. The other, he's an RFA, only a 1.95 mil cap hit. Plays literally every position, left wing, right wing, center. Sam Bennett. Sure. I don't know if Calgary would be willing to give up on him, but I absolutely mm-hmm. love Sam Bennett's game. He only has 26 points this year, but I try to look past that. Right. I think he would be a great depth forward for the Flyers. Because mm-hmm. the Flyers' problem right now is depth. Yes. It's like the bottom six. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Another I name. Still wouldn't, hmm? If JVR for some reason were to fall yeah. to the third line, I wouldn't matter either, depending on the people he's with. Just because sure. even in, Tim- in Toronto, he's the third line, and he put up, what, 40 goals or something like 36. that? 36. 36, still. And he was on their third line. I mean, Toronto's a lot better than Flyers, but I'm just saying. Everywhere at the r- with the right people. And James Van Riesek has shown once again this season mm-hmm. he can score. Because at times it seems like the only people scoring are Couturier and JVR. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Damn. <laughs> it's not even going to come close to his career high. 62 points. Oh, my. I know. <laughs> uh, who's this? JVR. I'm just wow. looking at his stats. Just yeah. Cause. He probably could cook close to it if he played the full season. True. I, I think he would have. Because he went on a tear. He's on a tear. He's Sorry, I like He is on, on a tear. tear. <laughs> He's been on a, ter- a tear since January. Yeah. Him and Couturier both. Oh, my God. Coots is just phenomenal. Coots is three points away from his career high from last year. Same amount of goals. Three less assists. Wow. And less games, too. Impressive. Impressive young criteria. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that's been great with Couturier is because in seasons past, hmm. he's been getting hurt. He has. And luckily, 
for most of the sliders, they've been relatively healthy this season. And last season, too. Yeah. Progroff has still yet to miss a game. Knock on wood. <laughs> Can't risk it. Nope. He got hurt in the last game. Or, no, he played hurt, sorry, in the playoffs. Mm, yes. And Justin Bailey, I know everyone was loving it for the longest time. They did finally use the call up on yes. him. Yes. So he's no longer going to have <laughs> be caught up one oh, day. So that was leave practice, go back to the Flyers, then go back down. <laughs> yeah. That was just ridiculous. It was. But now it is interesting to see what the Flyers will do. Now that with the moves that they're going to play with mm-hmm. Sam Warren playing tonight, um, that. Uh, what they do going forward, lineup wise and everything. Yeah. Who do they want to see more and everything? I doubt Moivar gets another look, but might surprise me. Just because he's there. Right. He's only played seven games this season, Michael Neuber. Oh, gosh. I honestly forgot he was on the team still. I really. <laughs> One that's so mm-hmm. bad. He's one and four this season. And also, that's a big reason why Ron Hextall was let go. Because, look at it. He was so confident in having Brian Elliott and Michael Neuvert still this year as his one-two goalie punch. Yep. And it's more like of a yeah. love tap of a mm-hmm. yeah tandem. That and also that Hextel last there. year they were hurt too so and that too yeah you didn't really do much to improve that exactly so this is why you get eight goalies <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my but if you're still interested in the Flyers they play tomorrow night against Toronto tonight oh tonight sorry tonight tonight come on Weber. same as coming tonight tonight <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's going to be... So, again, if Flyers lose in regulation, they are eliminated officially. We can finally say they are eliminated. The yes. thing we've been wanting to say all season long. <laughs> uh, but they have to make it difficult. Yes. I actually do want to see one thing. Also, oh, Sam Marin's playing tonight. That, yeah, I said that a second. Woo! Yeah. But I think the Flyers are actually close. To what? Are you looking at standings? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, tonight's game, 7 o'clock. Uh, Toronto is in Philadelphia at the Wells Fargo Center. 97.5, the FNAC you can listen to on the radio or if you're watching on TV, NBC Sports, Philadelphia. So, there you go. And Mike, what do you got? Yeah, the Flyers, if the Flyers lose and go off, they could start falling off a little bit on the whole draft lottery. Okay. Right now, they're maybe 14th. Still not bad. Mm-hmm. And that's where they took Joel Farabee last year. Yep. So that you I'd be content f- with. There you got a 5% chance of getting top I three, 1.5% chance of number one. one or, uh, number one. If they lose and Florida were to win the next game, they could possibly switch, mm-hmm. which at 13, you're at a 9.8% chan- ch- chance at th- uh, the third overall. At no, top three and three percent for first overall. I really do think if the Flyers end up right where they are at fourteen, I could see them getting. Well, because um, I forget. Well, so like, l- let's say no, that, that's not true. Because I was going to say uh, it's either fourteen or like let's say if there's a team that. No, I just did a sim lottery and guess who was first overall? Flyers. No, Oilers. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Are you on cap friendly? No, I'm in Tankathon. Oh, I love Tankathon. All right, I, I want to do this. Because the top three right now, it'd be Edmonton and the su- uh, lottery I simulator I did. Oh, I see It'd what you're be doing. Edmonton, Colorado, because from Ottawa, and then yeah. third, Rangers. So wait, here's my question. Um, oh, this one I could actually possibly. No, maybe not. I could possibly see is. Detroit. Oh, Detroit got the first mm-hmm. overall pick in. Uh, and Ottawa, which is Colorado's pick, got dropped down to fourth. Same. Columbus has a second overall pick in this one. I have. Flyers dropped down to 15. Yikes. 
Yeah. If you notice, whenever you do this, with when you get the 14th, 15th, you don't really move much. No. <laughs> and if you do, it's going down to 15. <laughs> yeah. I did it again, I, again and Edmonton got the... Uh, I think I'm one of those things, like, look how close points-wise they are. For even, like, Minnesota's right there, too, so it can easily fall back to possibly 12 at some point. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God damn it. I did it again in New Jersey's first overall again. Oh, my gosh. All right, I think at this one, we're just getting too distracted. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, but I think with that, I think this is where we're going to end it today. Um, it's a good spot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, for this dysfunctional podcast. Before we go, I got, I just did, I did like five different times. Philly jumped up 11 spots to third overall. Wow. Again? <laughs> Again. And oh, Minnesota jumped up 11 spots to first overall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Colorado's, Ottawa slash Colorado's pick is second overall. They One bumped dream. down a spot. And if the Flyers start falling off some more, then hopefully... Because exactly. the worse we do, the better the odds. Exactly. And there With you go. That, that's what we're going to leave you on. I like that. The-